Good day, everybody. It is Kalaxin here for Freer in Episode 9 Reaction and Review, and I'm super excited, so we will just get into it and then talk about theories and stuff in the opening. Three, two, one, press and play. Alrighty, oh my god, okay, so the last times that I recorded, and I've explained this a couple times, right, but I am working on my second channel full time now, it's a whole thing. So when I did the commission um, last week, right, because this is a commission, if you guys are interested, you can check out Kofi uh, and everything, and so that has some details of how you too can commission me to watch stuff. So somebody commissioned me to continue to watch free run, uh, basically. And so the last time I recorded, it was after already recording, right? And, uh, I decided that today, like, I needed to make sure that I was locked in and, like, dedicated a whole, like, day just to free run because I feel like that we're gonna want to lock in, like, after that cliffhanger, like, literally insane, right? And so I feel like, like I said, you know, I still enjoyed the episodes that I watched last time, but it was after like a long day of work. I am like literally like I am so energized right now and I'm so excited. And so that's good. It's always good to be that way instead. In terms of theories, I keep bringing this up that like I feel like there's a parallel between Freerun and the demons or like maybe all elves and the demons. So I feel like that we may get a little bit of that. I'm also pretty sure that the person on the throne is Aura. They call her like Aura the guillotine or something. And so I'm really interested, but that's the only theory I have. And we've talked about that a couple times, so I won't go through like the whole thing again, but we're starting to see like Freerun has a bit of a bloodlust. You know what I mean? I love how he's like, now I remember. Like, I'm surprised you didn't remember before, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, you think you would remember somebody like that, but like, sure, for the plot, you know? Oh my god, she looks so terrifying, it's so good, oh my god. Yeah, so that's what he was saying, like, he hates geniuses because they don't work for anything. Like, I found that really interesting. But, like I said, like, there was a parallel there with Freerun having her little smile and then also, oh, okay. And then the guy having a little smile. So this guy's okay. Oh, okay. It's a thing around his neck, though, right? We established that that's what's controlling the, the, the barriers, didn't we? Or was that just my imagination? It could have been... Oh, I like this guy. It would be interesting if he came on the journey. Like, I guess he's in charge of a place, though, so maybe not. I don't know. I just feel like something's going on with this man. Yeah, she was right. <laughs> okay, but, like, you guys have bigger problems. So, I mean, okay. I'm sure he knows that now, too. Oh! Oh, so he knows! Oh, but they probably don't know! Oh my god, I love this! I love how, like, again... Yeah! Free Rin Loki famous! Oh! Oh, see? Oh my god, I'm getting, like, chills already! Oh, man! That's crazy, too! Like, that they're all still- I wonder if they're based on seven deadly sins. Like, I know that's kind of, like, not cliche, but, like, you know. 80 years! Oh my god! Oh, those suits of armor are cool. Yeah, is it the guillotine because all those armors don't have heads? Are those, like, the bodies of soldiers, like, that she's killed? Or are they just, like- they kind of remind me of the things in Dungeon Meshi, but I'm assuming it's not like there's a monster in there, you know what I'm saying? Oh. A monster, I mean, as in an edible monster. <laughs> there's probably something going on. Yeah, see, so they're puppets. I like that. I like a good puppet to your vibe. But what if she's not controlling all of them at once? Like, that's my first thought. Because some of them are still... Oh, damn! Jesus! I love her! 
She is a very cheerful sounding personality. Oh, see, look, they have things on them. That kind of reminds me, yeah, that's the thing that the guy has around his neck. Yeah, so these were like, that must be family crest. Yeah, so they are people. I think that's what that green stuff was. It was like rotting body stuff, not mud. Okay. Sure, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I'm trying to think of, like, Seven Deadly Sin situation, but... Because obviously those are, like, scales of justice, so my first thought is pride, but I also feel like controlling other people's bodies, I don't know, like, there's something... I don't know, like, it sounds kind of lusty, like, not in that way, don't get it twisted, but you know what I'm saying? Like in the vein of what lust is, I don't know. Right. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. So the last time it happened, was it Mmm, interesting. I like magic things like this. Okay. Right! Hmm. Yeah, and that's why the, the head situation, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, like, common sense would make me think that Free Rin just has a stronger... Like, you know what I mean? So that she could tip the scales, but I feel like it's not gonna be that easy. So I feel like that there's a twist or something in here. It must smell horrendous, like if they're rotting. You know what I mean? Like. They're people's family still. Uh, oh no! Oh my god! Okay! Wait, what? What did they mean by this? Okay. But yeah, like... What was the meaning of that? I'm talking about what Freerin said, by the way. Like, just how she was like... I guess it's because, like, I don't know, the lack of remorse reminded Freerin, like, oh, okay, you talk shit about Hamel, so it's okay to kill you, like, or something, I don't know. love him. He's like so refreshing. I talked about that before, but that's the best way I can describe him. He's such a refreshing character. Um, just like male character, you know what I mean? Oh, okay. Damn, he's already bossing her around. Oh dear. Oh. I love that! Oh 
my god! That's hilarious! Yeah, I mean, exactly, right? I love that. This show is great. Yeah, see, so that's what's having the barrier. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I think that that thing controls the barrier. I don't remember if they said that or not, but... Oh. Can't you heal him or something? Like... Ah, uh, damn. Oh my god, everybody's just covered in blood! Ah! Oh! Oh no! Oh shit! I was just thinking that, like, why would she throw it away? Oh my god! Uh, bro! What the hell? Can she mimic his fighting style? Is this, like, some Velvet from Ruby type thing? Yeah, that's scary! Oh no! No, but they can't kill Fern off right now! Oh, okay, no, it's not her vitals. Okay, well, Freerin has to come back and rescue them. There's no way they're they're killing off Fern in episode nine. Like, I love how she's just not saying anything either. Oh no! Oh dear. Oh, I love the music, too. What the fuck? I love her! She's hilarious! Okay. Okay. Oh. Oh. Damn. Oh, boy! Oh, dear! Oh, I love this! I love that I knew she'd do something like that! Like, I love that this guy loves to talk and that's gonna be his fatal flaw because, like, demons only talk to, like, you know what I mean? Like, as manipulation? But this man just loves to hear himself talk for no reason. Can't- he- can't she- yeah. Wait, what? Oh! Oh, damn! Oh, damn! Oh my goodness! Go off, Fern! Oh my god! Okay, so do it! What are you telling him this for? Ah! Now blast him, Fern! Just go in! Oh? If he could really cut her head off, he would have done it already. You know what I mean? He's just bluffing. Oh. Oh my 
my god! Demon cows! What the fuck? Oh! Okay. Yeah! Oh, see, so she just needs to- So kill him! Just kill him! Just kill him! It doesn't matter! You fire faster! If you- If she fires faster than Freerin, she can definitely kill this guy. Come on! Ah! Yeah, see? Okay, that's cool, but like, did he just, no, his eye is open. I think it must have cut above his forehead. I thought she took his whole, whole oh my god, I thought she took his whole goddamn eye out. Oh my god. What? Oh! Okay, so she- Oh, well that's fucking- What the fuck, bro? Oh! She was there that day! I guess! That's fucking- What the hell? Oh my god. And so if Stark can beat her, it's like, you know, beating his master in a sense, right? 
Oh dear. Is Fern just gonna just let this like Fern is just gonna let this happen? No, they can't kill Stark off. He's in the OP. <laughs> See, I think it's gonna be her thing, like of her arrogance. Maybe, like, or something. Like, you know what I mean? Because she's just like, okay, time to go. And I'm like, bro, you're not done. Oh, man, I love this, though. I love how, like, the parallel between Freerin training Fern and then, like, you know, this with him. Like, oh, my God. This episode's so good. Okay, but... Oh, I like that! Oh, okay! I mean, he's not wrong! Like, you gotta keep fighting, right? And if you're dead, you won't have time to think about how you failed because you'll be dead. <laughs> You know? Oh! I love that! Oh! Oh! Okay, I like this girl though. I kind of hope I kind of hope she doesn't die. Like, you know what I mean? I kind of like her. I think their unique magic is really cool. Meanwhile, like Freerin must be like, "What the fuck is going on?" Oh dear. What? Oh God, oh no. Oh dear. Oh, well that was it then. Ah, oh, damn it, see, he got distracted, too! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. See, but that's interesting. Why was he distracted? Like, I don't think he actually cared about his underling, did he? Because, like, that's an interesting question. Is that, like, why would he look? Is it just because, like, oh, I gotta make sure that my plans are going well? Or what? Like, I don't know. Like, it's interesting because I, I already, you know, talked about this and speculated. I don't want this to turn into, like, are we the bad guys? Because I let myself get gaslit last week. But, like, it is an interesting idea that some demons do have emotions, like, even though they pretend not to. And, like, some sort of con concept of like family like maybe you know because I really like the characters that are evil but they still care about their own group you know like they still care about their own people or their own team or whatever and so it would be kind of interesting if that demon guy you know he's like oh well what are words if not just manipulation and stuff like in regards to humans but like did kind of care about his two like weird demon children I don't know like I, I I'm kind of torn because I feel like that the show it's not gonna be as straightforward as like demons are evil and bloodlusty like I think it's gonna be a little bit like that just because I already like let myself get gaslit by that girl like I really thought that they would have been able to reform that girl um from two two episodes ago like whatever the backstory was with Hamel in that village and it was like oh we'll we'll raise the girl as our own and then like there was all that sort of thing and she's like oh well I killed the the father of the of this girl like I killed the village chief so now you can have a daughter we're all even and my thing about that was, like, okay, that was a wrong thing to do, but, like, technically, like, in my mind, it kind of, 
like, that kind of makes sense. Like, you know what I mean? Like, from the perspective of, like, a demonic creature in terms of making things even. Um, and so I do wonder if we will get into that territory at all. That there's more to the demons going on. Like, there's kind of a middle ground, I guess. But it's not as, like, middle as, like, what, like, Hamel or, like, that village chief guy thought. Like, it's more like, if Freerin is on this end, right... Hold on. If Freerin is, like, over here, and then, like, thinking that the demons can be reformed is over here, it's, like, not exactly the middle, but there may be, like, something here. Like, not all demons are what Freerin is thinking, but most of them are. Like, it's closer to what Freerin is saying, but maybe there is room for, like, are we the bad guys? I don't know. Like, because when you think about it, too, like, the the girl, Linny, I, I didn't quite understand how to pronounce her name even while listening to it, uh, like, hearing, um, hearing the other guy say it a couple times, but, like, that girl watched a bunch of demons get presumably destroyed by Hamel, um, and, like, free reign in, like, their party, right? That's how she copied, um, Isen? E Isen's moves? Like, the dwarf guy's moves, right? And so, I don't know if they're gonna ever dig into the sentimentality of that, but, like, I don't know, like, she was a little kid, and I know we already talked about that these demons are not really children, but, like, she kind of, I don't know, like, I wonder if she had beef, right, that they, like, wiped out her entire demon, like, not that they have a concept of family, but just, like, you know, like, that they wiped out all those people in front of her, like, I do wonder if it's gonna be, like, we care about people, but we only care about each other, we think that demons are superior, and so we want to wipe out, like, the rest of the human race or something, like, it may be something like that, and not that the demons have a total disregard and, like, no emotions, it's just, like, that their emotions are only in capacity, like, they're only toward other demons, and even that, like, most demons don't care about each other, it's only some of them, right? Um, I still feel like we're waiting for something to drop in terms of, like, the free run situation that I talked about, like, comparing her and the demons and, like, the contrast and the foils and everything, but otherwise, I thought this episode was really, really good. Very exciting, but then also, like, I feel like it had a lot of meaningful, um, stuff in it, like, in terms of the themes, especially with, again, the fern and free run flashback compared to the Stark and then, um, Eason flashback and, like, all of that stuff. I thought that was so, so good, like, how they did it and how they're showing that, like, the demons are bloodthirsty, but they're not, like, I don't know, immortal. Like, that kind of sounds like common sense, but they aren't completely logical thinkers, I guess is what I'm saying, and that even if you're logical, there's still room for, I guess, like, arrogance and pride and everything like that and that's what kind of like with Linny she was like oh like I want to go see what like you know my master's doing like that's why she kind of wandered away right and then obviously with him it's it was his arrogance of not thinking that they were a threat and then also um, you know, turning around to see what was going on with Linny and leaving his, uh, defense open. Like, they aren't perfect. They don't operate as perfectly logical beings, even though supposedly they don't have a lot of emotion. Their emotion really comes from, I think, themselves. You know what I mean? Like, a personal pride, a personal arrogance, a personal curiosity. Like, it's not going to be, like, in service or for the good of anybody else. However, they still do feel stuff. Like, they feel angry or, or whatnot, right? Because a completely logical thinker would have, I think, may, like, maybe have, maybe would have, yeah, maybe would have seen Stark and Fern as a threat, just, like, you know, doing an objective assessment, but the demon guy did not do a fully objective assessment, he just looked down on them from the very beginning, and so you can see the, uh, again, it's not human because they're not human, but they are people, you can see the arrogance of regular people bleed through in the demons and that they are not completely logical, they still have um, flaws that are very much human flaws. I'm also thinking more about the seven deadly sins thing, like, I know that's really cliche, but there are seven of them, right? And I'm trying to think, it's like pride, envy, gluttony, sloth, um, wrath, lust, then another one, I don't remember what, I already forgot, I already forgot what I said, oh uh, yeah, so something like that anyway, I'm, I'm trying to think of, like, for me, it kind of, you could read Aura as pride, 
need, like, as pride relates to justice or whatever, but I'm kind of thinking that, like, the, the thing about the body control is that it seems like lust, and, like, I guess we can argue about the definition of lust in the comments, but I think that gratification using somebody else's body, like, I know that's very abstract, like, that could be fall into lust, I guess, right? It's like, it's not like that she is, you know, like, it's not sexual, I guess, is what I'm saying. Like, it's not like, you know, lust from Full Metal Alchemist, like, sort of vibe where they, they, they have those traits, but, like, as a representation of the idea, I feel like that her magic, you know, may work like that. In terms of the scales, the thing about the scales is, is that that may just be a magic object. That may have, like, no bearing on the sort of, like, seven deadly sins type theory. That may be separate. Like, that may just be, like, an object that exists. But there's something interesting about that, and I don't know if this is true or if this has any, like, folklore basis in Japan, but you guys let me know. But... In I'm in Love with the Villainous, they had this story in the anime of these scales, and basically the idea was there was a princess and there was two guys, and the two guys have to pick, like, the most extravagant, like, rare thing or something, like, to show their love to the princess, right? And so they put these things on the scales, and so the first merchant puts all these jewels and stuff, but then the second guy puts a flower, and the flower guy actually wins, and so there's a whole moral and lesson in that sort of thing. So all of that to say, I don't know if that's just something that they made up for I'm in love with a villain. Uh, I'm in love with the villainous, but I wonder, does that, like, is that a story in Japan that exists in some way? Like, is that a common, like, fairy tale or folklore story? And they incorporated it into I'm in love with the villainous. And it could the scale idea in that case, like, that's why it's here if she's supposed to represent lust because that story was about true love, like about who is worthy of the princess's love and like the idea of love versus lust, I guess. Like the merchant that tries, you know, just raw bribery, like getting all these jewels and like fancy things like shallowness and a superficial uh, superficiality, you know? And then also the person that was genuine. So could the scales in this case, I know they said something about more mana, I'll have to rewatch that scene again because I think I understand, but just before we go to the next episode, I'll, I'll rewatch it and make sure I understand. Like, it, oh, it's whoever has more mana, but you kind of get that idea of like pure of heart and like all that stuff. So, yeah, those are the only things that I'm thinking about. I will rewatch some of that again before we get into episode 10 because I think it is important to make sure I understand everything before we're going into like, I'm assuming that Aura and Free Written, like, they still need to duke it out. But yes, fantastic episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for attending Kalaxon. Royal Court. If you want to see these early, you can check out the Patreon, and if you want to commission me, that is on Kofi Coffee, you know, the money website, and so you guys can check that out if you want to, and thank you to the commissioner. Again, I am really enjoying myself. I'm so glad that I got to do things this way, and I will see you next time. Bye!